Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Kitbash Survival, and today we're going to talk about jet boils. So this is my original jet boil that I bought about 15 or 16 years ago, and I love this thing. It has performed flawlessly since day one. Now you can use these like a regular stove to cook regular food, but I've only ever used it to boil water, and it has done a fantastic job. It's never failed me, not even once. And even the parts that are designed to be replaced from time to time as they wear out, those haven't worn out. And this has been on 30 plus backpacking trips with me over the years. Now, occasionally I'll take other stoves to try them out, but this is my default cooking system because it's all I need. And that's because when I go on a backpacking trip, I tend to take freeze dried food as opposed to fresh food. And I do that for a few reasons. Number one, it's lighter because with freeze dried food, you don't have all the water weight that you do with fresh food. Also, you don't need all the pots and pans that you do with fresh food. And then finally, I like to use freeze dried food because it's less attractive to animals. I camp out in the Smoky Mountains quite a bit and there are a lot of black bears up there. And if you're cooking a bunch of hot dogs and hamburgers and fish, it's much more likely to attract black bears. And I can't blame them if I was a bear and I smelled a bunch of hamburgers and fish cooking, I'd check it out too. So I use the freeze dried food because the odor footprint, if you will, is much less than that of fresh food. You don't have near as much stink that can attract animals. You eat all the food that you cook and then when you're done, you take the pouch that you used, you put it in the trash bag, you put the trash bag up on the bear line. And to date, I've never had any bear issues using freeze dried food. Now, of course, it's usually not a big deal if bears come into your campsite, you make a bunch of noise with some pots and pans or what have you, and they'll usually go away, but I would just prefer to avoid them altogether. And that's why I like freeze dried food. But of course, to cook freeze dried food, all you need is boiling water. And that's where the jet boil comes in. Anyway, a couple weeks ago, I was over at REI after they reopened and I was looking around and I saw a jet boil that I hadn't seen before. Now, it may have been on the market for a while, but I haven't seen it before. And it's this little guy, the jet boil Minimo. And as you can see, it's a little more squat than the older counterpart. And so I thought, you know, maybe I'll pick this up and see what changes they've made and see if it might be worth taking this out on the trail rather than my original. So what we're going to do today is a side by side comparison and we'll find out if it might be worth retiring my old jet boil in favor of the new Minimo. So what initially attracted me to the Minimo was that it appears to be a little bit smaller than the jet boil. It's shorter. But it's also wider, so I'm not so sure about that. I thought if it was a little bit smaller, it might have a smaller footprint and therefore be more pack friendly. So let's find out. Let's measure these things. So the Minimo is about five and a half inches tall by five inches wide. And the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height. And so that gives us right at 108 cubic inches for the volume of the Minimo. The original, on the other hand, is seven inches tall by four and a quarter inches wide. And so applying the same formula, pi times the radius squared times height, we get a volume of 99.3 cubic inches. So the old jet boil actually does have a smaller volume than the Minimo. So why this is called mini anything, I'm not sure. All right, so now I want to weigh each of these to see if there is any difference. Now I'm weighing the packed weight. This is the way I pack these when I take them out on the trails. So that means that each of these is missing this adapter that each originally came with. This adapter allows you to put a pot or a pan on the jet boil. I don't do that. I only use these to boil water, so I never take this. And also each of these is carrying a full can of fuel. So let's pull out the old scales and see where each of these lands. All right, so the original jet boil weighs one pound, 7.2 ounces. The Minimo, on the other hand, 
one pound, 7.4 ounces. So practically the same. In fact, the only reason the Minimo probably weighs 0.2 ounces more is because the burner assembly and the fuel bottle are carried in this little sack. If I took that sack out and just had the burner assembly and the fuel bottle in there by themselves, they would probably weigh exactly the same. So again, I'm not really sure why they call this Mini because they weigh almost exactly the same. Now, of course, just because they have almost the same weight and this one has a slightly greater volume, it doesn't mean that this one is not gonna have its benefits. Depending on your particular situation and how you're packing your gear, you may want something that's short and wide rather than tall and narrow. What I wanna do now is assemble each of these and we'll see how much water each holds. And we'll also do a cook time test to see if there's any noticeable difference and how long each takes to boil a cup of water. So we'll start with the original. All right, so the max fill line on my original jet boil is at two cups, but I wanna see what the maximum capacity of this entire thing is. So I'm gonna pour some water in here and fill it up all the way to the top. Now, of course, you wouldn't fill it all the way to the top. I'm just doing this to measure the entire capacity. So we've got that there, and then I've got my measuring cup. And it looks like the entire capacity of the old jet boil is right at 32 ounces, a little bit over. I'm gonna look at the milliliters. It's right at one liter. It's exactly one liter. Like I said, you wouldn't want to boil the water with it at the top like that. That would be stupid. But it will hold a liter of water. Now I want to test the boil time for one cup of water. So they got a little measuring cup here in the base for one cup. So we'll fill it for one cup. and then put it in there and we'll attach it to the burner assembly. All right, so here's my stopwatch and I'm gonna go ahead and start it up, put it on full blast and we'll time it. Obviously this is not a scientific measurement, but hopefully we'll get a general estimate of how long it takes to boil one cup of water. And I'm going to do this to a rolling boil. I believe it takes around 60 seconds, or it's supposed to, but we'll find out. It would probably go faster if I put the lid on, but I want to be able to see it boil. And there we go. So it took right at one minute, 15 seconds, give or take, to boil a cup of water in the old jet boil. All right, so we'll set this aside and let it cool down. And we'll bring over the new Minimo. And we'll see what 15 years has done in terms of water capacity and boiling time. The assembly is very much the same. They've made a few design changes here and there, but the nuts and bolts are basically all the same. This one has sort of a smoked clear measuring cup down here, which is kind of nice. 
And this one has measurements in both milliliters and ounces, unlike the old jet boil, which just had one measurement for one cup. We've got the stand conveniently stored in the top of the lid, which is nice. And then this goes up on the stand like the other one did. So let's see what the entire capacity of the Minimo is. Now it's got measurements for 16 ounces and half a liter. And then I think there's a one liter mark as well. So let's find out. Quite to the top. I think I'll have to use a little bit of the water from the other jet boil. There we go. All right, so filled to the brim. Let's see what the capacity is. And once again, you would never want to cook with a full thing of water like this. I'm just doing this for testing purposes. Fold out the handle like that. And yeah, it's right at one liter. So the capacity is pretty much exactly the same, one liter. So now we'll test the boiling time. All right, now we'll add a cup of water. And I did change the water out because I added some of the warm water from the old jet boil into this. So I didn't want that to taint the boiling time experiment. So this is fresh cold water. And we'll put eight ounces in there. All right. And we'll get out the old stopwatch and start this again. I suspect this might take less time because it's a wider cut, so there's more surface area on the bottom for the heat, but we'll find out. And there we go. All right, so yeah. This did boil a cup of water faster than the original, right at 55 seconds. So not bad. I think that increased surface area on the bottom decreased the boiling time. Now, of course, we're only talking 20 seconds of difference. It's really not that big of a deal, but it is something. Another thing to keep in mind is that the amount of time it's gonna take you to boil a cup of water is gonna vary depending on your altitude and stuff like that. So. Once again, this is not a scientific experiment, but I think we can safely say that each of these will boil a cup of water in about one minute, give or take. So yeah, the old Jet Boil versus the newer Jet Boil Minimo. What do I think? I think they're both very capable. I don't see any distinct advantage of having one over the other. This one does boil water a tad faster, at least in my test. So I suppose if you're in a hurry, this one might be slightly better. Also, the short and fat configuration might fit better into your pack, depending on how you load your gear. But other than that, I really don't see that much of a difference. I'm not sure why they call this the mini mo. There's nothing mini about it when you compare it to the old jet boil. Now, there are some things on the new one that I like and some things I don't like. I like the fact that the stand is now contained in the lid. That was clever. I like the throttle control on the new one. It's a lot easier to grab with this big ring rather than this tiny little knob. However, I like the old burner assembly overall better than the new one. The new one seems a little bit flimsy and I think that's because they stripped it down 
to reduce weight and stuff like that, whereas the old one is much more rugged and sturdy. So I kind of like that better. And also on the cup itself, they've got these fold out metal handles, which are nice. They've got rubber grips. It's connected directly to the pot, so it, it will conduct heat into the handles. And of course, that's why they have the rubber grips. So they're nice, but they do require more work to use than the old one that just had this cloth handle. Now, the cloth handle was connected to the sleeve and not directly to the pot, but there was no heat conducted to it at all. And I've always liked that. It's always been easy to use. So I kind of like this a little better because it's just easier to use. It's right there, you grab it and you're good to go. Whereas this one, you kind of have to fiddle with it and get these folded out before you can use it. But yeah, you know, both of these are really good. But right now, I don't see any compelling reason to ditch my old jet boil in favor of the new one. So I think I'll keep on using the classic jet boil that I have. And I'll just keep this one in reserve in case this one breaks or gets lost or something. Or in case there's some sort of emergency and I need a second stove. But that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm Eric Siegel. This is Kitbash Survival. And I'll see you next time.